I Maybe met the biggest, the of biggest villain of reality TV, Rachel Levis, AKA Raquel. And I met her at a White Fox event um, that happened July, 2022, literally two weeks prior to her first time with Tom Sandoval. R-O-T-N, let, let me present, present to you. you the Rotten Podcast. The Rotten Podcast. How do you want me to say it? Rotten. And we are back for another episode. We are on 27. Hello, guys. You forgot to say we're on the Rotten Podcast. We're on the Rotten Mother Podcast. Also, this is something we never do. We're going to just say it straight up. If you guys haven't rated us five stars yet, what the hell are you guys doing? Seriously. Give us the five stars. Subscribe to us if you guys are new. And give us a comment. Let us know what you think. Engage. If you hate us, totally fine. Maybe just shut up. But if you no, like let us. us know. <laughs> I want all the smoke. <laughs> Um, so last week we did not post an episode because Matt and I actually filmed an episode talking about Vanderpump Rules and then more news came out and it just felt too old to share all of our thoughts and opinions. So we're yeah. refilming it with all of this new information that we have totally. on board. So, so funny. Well, before we get into that, just setting the scene, it's Memorial Day. Yes. We are running again. I'm very little sleep, weird schedule. We've been on such a goofy sleep <laughs> schedule. I don't even know. Going to bed at like three or four, waking up at 10. This is so unlike you. This I is know. you. Honestly, right now it feels like I am dating the you I dated when we first met because you've been sleeping late and just working on music and just like a lot more carefree recently. Yeah. Um, I mean, it took me definitely some time to break out of my normal sleep schedule because I was waking up for work every day at 8, 8.15 and then waking up to work out earlier which I still do. Yeah. I'll meet Andrew at the gym at like 730. But aside from that, you know, the, I mean, there are times where I have to tell him like, <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo, he's like, yo, 730, because that works with his schedule. Mm -hmm. But I try to make it even though it doesn't necessarily work with mine. So there's times where it's like three or four o'clock in the morning and I text him. I'm like, I'm not going to be able to make it. I can't run on three hours. Do of you sleep think anymore. he's mad at you when you do that? Or he just doesn't no. even care? I'm sure it's like a little bit annoying because mm -hmm. it's a lot better working out with someone. And since we're in a good routine, it's probably like, oh, you know, come on. But before I used to just bounce around on three, four hours of sleep and I still can, but I really do feel the effects when I'm not getting a full eight hours. Yeah. And it was the other week. I think I woke up at eight o'clock naturally, but I had gone to bed at maybe four or two or something. Yeah. And then I deliberately went back to bed. I'm like, <laughs> you know what? I need that eight. Let me get back. Let me sleep well, for another even two today, hours. Today, both of us didn't go to bed till 4 a.m. And we were supposed to film this episode at like 8 a.m. Right now, but it's 2.30 p.m. And both yeah. Matt and I are like, Let's I think do it later. we both had our alarms go off. You took a shower and then you came yeah. back into bed. You're like, do you want to just film this later? I was like, yeah, because I there's yes. no way you were going to wake up. No, I had a really late get night. ready and you had to go to horseback riding, but. Honestly, I'm excited for this week. My sister Tammy is in town. I know. And I don't know if I'm allowed to say this yet. And if I can't say it, I'll bleep it out. But she just got engaged. I know. I'm so excited she, for her. She's engaged. I have never been in a situation where all three of us, the sisters, the Ma sisters, have been like all engaged or like with our permanent fixtures in our life. Permanent people in our life. Permanent person. Permanent person. Speaking of permanent people. So last week I was at Target. What happened? And you know the Target that we go to? It's yes. like when you walk in the doors, it's a straight, like right to the left, it's customer service. Mm -hmm. But then if you were just to go straight all the way back, you could see the back of the aisle. That's where like the plates and the bowls are and everything. Yeah. So I'm walking in and I grab a little basket and I'm just walking straight. I see this guy on a bicycle starting to like head my way going out. Yeah. And he was going kind of fast. And at first I was like, oh, what is he doing? Wait, he's, he's riding a bike inside Target. Yeah, but it was a Target bike, like one that oh. you buy. And he just had this look in his eye and it caught me off guard. And so I looked at him and he was biking really fast. And on one arm, he was holding a suitcase from Target as well. No shit. And he was determined and i looked <laughs> back and i saw he just didn't stop he went straight for the doors the automatic doors opened for him security tried to get him but they could not get him in time and this dude just booked it it was low-key impressive because i'm like you know what <laughs> good for him i mean i don't think people should be stealing but those were like the 
the necessities. If you're homeless and you don't have anything, you need a suitcase bike and, and a, a bike. suitcase. You know, that will lend him. Yeah, I think I would judge him if he was like holding, I don't know. Well, who knows if he put anything in the <laughs> suitcase, but it was just crazy to see because he was going so fast mm -hmm. and he just didn't stop. And the security guards tried to get him. But then once he got out the door, there was nothing they can do because he was just deep in the parking yeah. lot at that point. And they kind of turned around and they just like laughed at each other almost because they were like, you know, he just got nothing us we so can bad. Do. There's nothing we can do. I heard that legally they can't even stop you. They just have to call the cops and report that yeah. they just got shoplifted or they yeah. just had like loss of inventory. Which makes sense because think about someone who's getting paid an hourly wage. They're not, they've never been to school for security well i think the security guards have to do some sort of well training, i mean if right? you're just working at mm -hmm. target for example you're not a security person and you see someone shoplift you're not allowed to do anything also you don't want to put yourself in danger yeah. by trying to stop them and then they stab you get in an altercation so it's like well i don't know if this is the case anymore but when i was in high school so early 2010 my sister, um, my sister Tree was working at Macy's and Macy's, their anti-theft fraud department was like, if you find someone that is stealing, you get half of the merchandise they were going to walk out the store with. But you can stop them? You cannot stop them. You have to call the, the like, oh, anti-theft squad and be like, hey, I witnessed this person shoplifting. And if gotcha. they catch them with merchandise on them, whatever the total of the merchandise was, half of that goes into your paycheck. So if someone steals like $100 worth of merchandise, you get $50. Wow. So Tree had actually caught a couple of people and had made like a couple hundred dollars catching people. No way. But I don't know if that's like the thing at Target. Like, I don't know what their like anti-theft department looks like but i think people would want to catch people if they were getting some sort of yeah. money from it it's like my um i had a fake id so when i was living in colorado my first time i was living in fort what were you doing with the fake id so i was 19 years old oh, okay. and i had a fake id and uh it was a real id my this buddy is your map fine or no 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 it oh. was a real id from new york and it looked like me do you still have it i want to see this no well, Did you give it to there. andrew i'm giving you the story sorry <laughs> so I have this ID that's so legit, it worked every single time because again, this guy had said he was like 24 or 25 and at the time I'm 19 and this is a real ID from mm -hmm. New York. So it scans, it's legit. Anyways, I'm going into the liquor store. I'm walking, I think with Sammy, Mario and a couple other of my friends and we're just walking down like the main strip. I'm walking into the liquor store and Mario made a joke while I'm walking in and he's like, Hopefully they don't uh, hopefully they don't catch you with your fake ID or something along the lines. It was so overtly admitting that I was under. He just did it so blatantly, like just so loud. He blatantly just said said that thought it was kind of funny. And I'm walking in and the guy that walks in behind me was the guy who was working at the store. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know if he heard that. I don't know what the deal is, but time to move on. I still went, got some booze, gave him the ID. He looked at it. He's like, this is not you do your signature and i was like i kind of just like scribbled some shit he's like this is i can't give this i'm like hey give me my my id back and he's like i'm gonna call the cops then and i was like all right and i just walked away because i'm pretty sure i had heard i don't know if this is true i don't know if it's still true but they have a policy where if you turn in fake ids you get paid like 50 bucks or something i don't know how really? true that is yeah but as there is, there must be some incentive to catch well, people with fake Well, the incentive is they don't want to just sell to someone under 21 because I think they're held liable if you do yeah. something bad. Yeah. Like if you got into a drunk driving accident, they could be liable even mm -hmm. though you had a real ID on them because yeah. they didn't check it thoroughly enough. Totally. Um, but that's <laughs> Mario. Like what? I was so Mario, what the actual I was like, F? Why would you say that? It wasn't even funny. It was so unnecessary. It was just. So you didn't have the foresight to be like, maybe we shouldn't even try to buy here. Like we just go to a different spot. Yeah, no, I didn't think I, I never had a problem because it was so legit. Mm -hmm. It looked exactly like me. It was a real ID. Gosh, I wish I had one time. Can you show I me this friend. Who is this friend? It's not a friend. It was my friend's friend. So my friend's older sister's college mm. friend. Well, did you hear about the scam that's currently happening right now at like Walmart and Target? 
No, but I was going to say that you sent me an article about all the Walmarts that are closing down in Chicago. Is it related or? No, totally different story. Totally different story. So there's like a new scam and Matt and I have actually been scammed by homeless people before in LA and it just gives me a bad taste in my mouth. And we'll talk about that in a second. I've been scammed. Sorry, really quick. I've been scammed multiple times by homeless people and I want to tell a a story. Same one in and out that I think I've told you. Oh my God, I was so mad at him. Um, So there's a new scam that fake homeless people or real homeless people are doing right now in front of Walmarts and Target where there'll be a woman with a sign being like, I need food for my son. And she'll target younger couples because apparently they're easier to manipulate. So she'll target them and she'll walk up to them being like, hey, and she'll just be sobbing, sobbing, sobbing. I have a son. I can't feed him. Can you help me feed him? And the second they agree, they're like, yes, we'll buy you baby formula. She'll follow them into the store and start putting random shit in the cart. And then she'll keep talking and talking and she won't let like the couple speak. And she'll just keep throwing like 10 tubs of baby formula, a bunch of diapers, all this stuff. And then when they check out, it's like a $700 bill. And so what they're doing is that they're taking that $700, turning around, returning every single thing, and then getting a gift card and then selling that gift card for cash or using it for like alcohol and what what the whatever they actually want with it i mean you kind of have to be a sucker to like let someone throw 700 dollars worth of shit in the cart without i've saying been a anything. sucker before but i feel like there's a level where yeah well apparently, hey maybe this is too much okay so and then, that goes to the next story about how you and i both got scammed by a home i have person. an extra thing to add though so i've heard three stories of this happening all over tiktok so apparently the wife was like hey you do know not buying any of this for you right because i told you one tub of formula and i'll buy you food but not all this other stuff and the girl will be like so you can't afford it so you don't make enough money you can't buy any of this like so she'll make them and she guilt them. them she'll yeah. guilt them into like buying the stuff for her because for you to say that in front of a man being like so you can't afford it is for a lot of men very embarrassing right Mm-hmm. And so the male will be like, Maybe fine. Maybe if you're insecure. Yes, or yeah, I mean. Or it's just like, hey, I don't want to buy $500 worth of shit for some random person. Yeah. Or it's maybe reasonable. some people just have that money. Like, all right. Yeah. I mean, I would love to meet those people. Maybe I should scam them. <laughs> just kidding. Um, but that one time we were going into Panda Express and there was a oh guy outside who was claiming to be blind. Deaf. Deaf. Okay, so so back to how both Matt and I have been scammed together with a homeless guy. I wouldn't even say he was homeless, but Matt and I were so excited to get our Panda Express. We literally go to Panda Express, order our food. We leave Panda Express and there is a homeless man outside and he is pretending he is deaf. He's like- He had a sign that yeah, was like, like saying, I'm deaf, I'm, I'm deaf. just looking for a meal. Yes, and so he could speak to us though, cause like, just because you're deaf doesn't mean you're mute. So he was speaking to us like, hey, can you get me um, a three entree plate? Which is a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's like giving you a bowl is fine. A two entree plate's fine, but three entree plate. And I think he wanted like the extras, like the walnut yeah. shrimp that was like another like $3 on I top of I just remember it. one of the things he wanted was like the more expensive thing. Yes. Yeah, so instead okay, of giving- It's not even that expensive in general. No, but the thing is he wanted a three entree plate and told us what he wanted. We decided we're just going to give him two because, hey, we're still giving you food. But he overheard the conversation and beelined straight to us being like, that's not what I said I wanted. And we're like looking at each other like, how did you hear that we only said two entree plate? Cause it was a second we said, two mm-hmm. one, can we get a two entree plate? He like ran to us being like, I wanted a three entree plate. And we're like, what the f-? I thought you just said you were deaf. He said, "Never mind. I don't want the food." He got angry at us, and then the workers looked at us, being like, "He's there all the time trying to get free food." I am just like, "So why don't you tell your customers that he's actually just scamming people and does this all the time? It isn't actually deaf. Like that's so mean." And this correlates to this instance I had without you, where I went to In and Out, and there was this angry homeless man wanting food and I bought it for him and he ended up terrorizing the entire staff at In-N-Out and I remember going up to him after I paid for his meal right because he was literally screaming at the top of his lungs and I touched him lightly to be like hey like what's wrong with your food I just paid for it everything should be fine he's like don't touch me 
as if like I wasn't the one that just paid for his food. And apparently what he does is that he tries to pretend that in and out messes up his order. He was like, I'm gluten free. I'm like, why didn't you say that from the beginning? So that he gets a second meal for free. Oh wow! So he gets like multiple meals. And I'm just like, yo, and the in and out worker came up to me after he was like, that was so nice of you for paying for his meal, but he does this all the time. And I'm like, why the f do you not tell your customers that he does this all the time? like shoo him away so that he stops bothering your customers. Well, when I was living in uh, Chicago back home, I was working at Bar Louie in mm -hmm. Evanston and um, I was a server there and I worked a long shift, you know, bussing tables, cleaning up after people, serving people food, doing the whole thing. I think I made after four or five hours, I think I only made like 50 bucks, 60 bucks yeah. tops. And they closed relatively late. And so it was probably two 30 in the morning and I'm walking to my car after my shift. And this homeless guy walks with me and he's like, he comes up to me and he's, he tells me this whole like really sad story. He's like, Hey man, I've never been in this position before. I don't have a place to stay. I just need $8. So me and my son can check into the spot, whatever, like, cause there's a place where you can like pay to get a shower and have a meal or whatever and sleep. And I was just like, that's a whole hour of you working. That was, yeah, I was like a whole hour, but I'm like, you know what? Okay, I couldn't imagine not having a place to sleep. Like, that sounds terrible. I can give him eight bucks, whatever. So I pull out my singles and all the cash, and I give him eight bucks. And then after I give him the eight bucks, I'm continuing to walk to my car, but he's walking, like, in the same direction as I am. And I hear him signal over to somebody, like, yeah, we got the money, hit him up. And then he was, like, coordinating to buy drugs, and I was so pissed off that was the last time i will ever give a homeless person money that was years and years ago but i just felt so manipulated and taken advantage of because i really busted my ass for that money yeah. it wasn't a lot of money of course i was in the position to be able to be like you know what whatever it's eight bucks but i had to clean up people's tables and serve them and whatever like i worked for that money and that was just such bullshit. I was so mad. Yeah. I was just so like, it's hard to not look at homeless people differently after you've had an experience like that. And it seems like a lot of people have had these experiences. So now what I do is I'll just buy people like food. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's at the grocery store, or someone's outside of a 7-Eleven and, you know, they catch me in a moment. I'll like, buy them food. I'll be like, hey, is there something you want me to buy you? Like, I'll buy you food, like a banana, something with like substance. And actually, I was at Ralph's like a few months ago and this guy was in the parking lot and he's like, hey, man, like he was just a really nice guy. Yeah. And uh, he's like, hey, man, like I don't have money. Like, could you buy me some food? Mm -hmm. And I had just packed up all my groceries in the car and I'm ready to leave. And I'm like, I think actually you were like, hey, can you get me this thing? So I had to go back in anyway. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? I have to go back in. Let me, I'll, I'll get you some food. So I bought him like a, fu a fruit bowl, a banana, and then like some other stuff. Yeah. Like I probably spent maybe like, 10 bucks and like gave it to him and he was really appreciative I, and then i saw him take that bag and he kind of like you know was moving around the parking lot like looking for other people like continuing to just yeah you want to stock up yeah. for the day or yeah. week um i i think i'm more comfortable giving people more money in food than money because like if i was to see a homeless person i'd give them like two or three bucks but if they want food i'd spend 20 bucks on them and that actually happened at cvs the one we just went to for mm -hmm. my uti medication and tmi um <laughs> but uh there was like this really kind black kid i would say who looked like he was 17 18 19 like super young and he was like, hey, is there any way you can just buy me food? I was like, yeah, like, what do you want? He's like, oh, this, this, this. And I was like, you want to just come with me inside? I'll buy you anything I, you want. I was like, literally, I was like, I, I wanted him to get more food. He had gotten like a sandwich, you know, like this pre-made sandwiches with like the grapes and stuff. Yeah. He spent like maybe 20 bucks and like 10 of those bucks was me being like, you need more food. Like, what else do you need? I was willing to spend more. I was like, do you want to go to Subway? It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> somebody's a good one that would fill me up but yeah my mom has this is why i get angry at my mom my mom is so giving ever since i was a kid i've seen her like give so much money to homeless people like 10 bucks 10 bucks 10 bucks i remember one time my mom was at a taco bell <laughs> next to our house and there was this white guy with like a giant backpack sitting next to him eating taco bell and my mom just randomly gives him 20 bucks and i remember this guy's face he looked at her and he was so confused and he was like i'm not homeless and she's like oh i'm so sorry 
<laughs> he was just a hitchhiker. But it was weird That's that so he was funny. eating like on the floor outside next to his backpack, yeah. but he probably just like sitting on the floor. He got used to it That's from hitchhiking. So funny. I mean, good for him for giving the money back. Yeah. Yeah. He could have easily just taken that. Yeah. But my mom is like very kind like that, but I think she needs I don't know your mom that well. No. I don't even know my mom that well. Yeah. <laughs> I've only spent well, your mom came and stayed with us once. And yeah, then during COVID. During COVID, she... Um, Cooked for us every single night. Do you remember she, was bought, wait, like, wait. she spent like $200 on groceries for yeah. us? And I was like, mom, we're not going to eat any of this I know, we still stuff. have some of the stuff that we're like, should we throw this the out? The fish There's sauces like sauce and, and the stuff. soy sauces. She yeah. validated so many things that I have been telling you. About? We need curtains. We need this. We need that. And she's like, you're crazy, Tiffany. What are you doing? This is ridiculous. And she's like... You know, she looked at me and kind of gave me that like talk about like, you need to make sure that you like, you know, do these things for <laughs> Tiffany, like take care of her. I'm like, trust me, I'm trying. Remember, like, that's so cute. Um, it reminds me of when my, when my uncle visited us and he was like fixing things around the house. Like, I don't He's know. Like, Let me show you how to. Yeah. I don't know. Like, it's so different than when your family comes into town. They like want to relax and do like all the touristy stuff. When my, my family comes into town, they're like. So what can I do for you? Well, that's because they see you as their little baby girl. Yes. And you have the house and you're living on your own and they don't get to spend as much time. Even my Tammy's mo well, coming my, my in. my mom comes, she's like, let me like, you know, help with like laundry and do these things and let, let's go oh, here maybe and I get don't that. Hear it, yeah. Da da da, you know, she, and I always have to like be like, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't need anything, you know? Oh, I'm not saying it's better or worse. Sometimes it's annoying. I'm just like, oh, can yeah. you relax? Cause like them, like I've realized I don't like when people aren't relaxed. I'm like, just mm -hmm relax so i Some can people relax don't like to relax though like my dad's kind of so like that annoying. he just it's, has to keep I love going dad, somewhere <laughs> and bop around and i think he's more relaxed now in his older age he's but. relaxed when he's sitting like he's very present sitting. Yeah, yeah yeah for sure but my mom is always trying to like do something mm -hmm. like cook for the house or clean for the house and like not sit and just relax stay busy yeah there's things to do i'm kind of like that i'm like you know you like to like after dinner you'll just be like sitting there and i'm like i can't just sit here there's like dishes need to be cleaned, things need to be taken care of dogs need to go out and i'm like i can't relax until those things are done i don't know how you do it it's insane i actually i have, get so much like anxiety around I it i know i definitely want to be better and i actually had this weird thought and i wanted to have a conversation with you about it i want to have a chore chart but okay Hear me out. You watch too no, no, many no, no, no. organizational TikToks. Bunny, please. Sorry. <laughs> just called you Bunny. I call Matt Bunny. <laughs> okay. Matthew, hear me out. Okay. So the chore chart is we don't have to do it for sure. But if we do it, we tell the other person and the other person pays us, but it's a vacation fund. So like it's money that's going in a pot that's mm, for vacation. That's like right. It. So then it's like. Hey, bunny, I just like picked up all my clothes. Pay, pay the vacation fund $5. Or you're like, hey, I just took out the trash weekly. It doesn't have to be like these crazy things. It can be like mm -hmm. our everyday things. Like I took Theo on a walk. I but took wait, Zoe so on I a walk. I should put I, money in for you cleaning up clothes on your floor that you made the mess for? Or is this more of like yeah, and then I pay us you sort of chores that we do in no, the no. house? Like anything that you have been like always putting off. Like say you work on music for an hour. You're like, I just finished my what verse and i pay you 50 bucks for that but it goes into like a thing that we can you know both benefit from i like it i think we need to hatch out some of the details because i don't yeah. you walking theo you're gonna be like i would pay you in the hole that's if this fine is all <laughs> but then you'll also like it'll benefit us at the end of the day yeah for sure either way so pretty much you're telling me that i'm just going to be getting credited for all the things that i'm doing already and so will Sick. I. I'll be tired of paying that. you. I'm so not that. worried about that. <laughs> well, then isn't this a great deal for you? I guess you're right. I just kind of feel bad taking your money <laughs> like that. I mean, well, I know okay. it goes towards us, but still. I was, I was doing this. I was like, how do I do this? Because I saw a parent on TikTok doing this with their kids where it was the kids actually had to pay them to eat snacks around the house. Like a Gatorade was like Monopoly money. It was like a hundred dollars worth of Monopoly money. And then like a Dum Dum was a dollar worth of Monopoly money. And she was like, and then the chore chart was like, if you walk the dog, you get 50. So half a Gatorade, mm -hmm. like things like that. I don't know if that's a good thing to instill in a child. Do you think so? That there needs to be a reward for doing everything that you're supposed to do? Like that almost sounds maybe a little counterproductive for a child because... Then you're kind of teaching them that there's a reward for everything rather than instilling the fact that 
these are things that you just have to do as a person. Well, you know what I, mean? I mean, it didn't work for me because <laughs> I wasn't instilled getting money for tours. So I wish I did. Yeah. Now I have to like find different ways to motivate myself. But like for me, it was like if I didn't mow the grass or there's consequences. Yeah, there was consequences if I didn't like clean the gutters or if my dad asked me to clean out the garage or like especially during the winter, I always had to like snow blow the driveway. Well, think of it or in, shovel. Think of it in the terms of like dogs. Dogs mm -hmm. fare better with rewards versus mm -hmm. consequences, right? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Not the way we, <laughs> not the way we yeah. do it. But. but ultimately what I'm saying is kind of instilling this belief in your kid that you have to do hard things and that's just a part of life and everyone has to have responsibilities. Well, if you don't want to be a part of my little money tour chart, then I will uh, do it money by myself. Money tour chart's fine, but you're talking about rewarding <laughs> kids for, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think maybe it's different because like, I think rewarding kids with snacks gives you an unhealthy relationship with snacks and mm -hmm. food, yeah. maybe, but the money thing, I, I don't know much about parenting. Or I, maybe it's like once you've done enough responsible, once you've taken care of your responsibilities, the reward is that you get to do the things that you want to do. Mm -hmm. So it teaches them like first you got to get your work done. You have to be responsible. And then after you've done those things, you are rewarded by being able to do what you want, whether it be screen time or yeah. going to a friend's house or doing getting to go to that sleepover that you've been asking for all week. Well, Did you have to ask your parents to like have sleepovers and stuff? What do you mean? You think I can just sleep over at a parent's at someone else's house and not have to tell my parents about it? Well, I mean, like <laughs> when you were at what age yes. did that stop for you? Because of Third, course when I was 18. When I moved out of the house, so I always in high had school, to ask. You, you had to be like, hey. Well, I'm I mean, in high school, I didn't really sleep over friends' homes that often. Guys? The guys were sleeping over at my house and <laughs> I was sneaking in. It was no permission. That's funny. Actually, one time I did ask for permission if um, my ex could stay at my house because it was pretty late at night. And I was like, can he just sleep on like the couch? And, she was and like, then yeah. he. Maybe I slept on the couch with him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nice. but I was talking about this in the sense of like, you were just telling me that your favorite time of the day is going to Starbucks after you go to the gym because it's mm -hmm. like your little reward. Yes. Right. Same with me. Every time I do horseback riding, typically yeah. I buy myself a drink, either boba or Jamba juice, whatever it is, because it's my little reward. And it actually motivates me and gets me more excited to do the thing I have to do mm -hmm. to get to the reward. So Atomic Habits was the first book that I read this year. And that was one of the main fundamental principles of building habits and also removing bad habits was ultimately creating a reward system for you mm -hmm. because you want habits to be attractable. You want them to be rewarding. You want them to be easy. You want them to be fun. And um, one of the best ways to do it is by after doing something hard, rewarding yourself for that behavior, like whether it be Starbucks or whether it be, you know, getting boba. So yeah, I just started naturally doing it and then it starts to make sense because it makes going to the gym more fun. If I know that when I'm done with this thing, I get to do something enjoyable, I'm like looking forward to the reward because I know that there's there's something waiting for me at the end. Now, isn't that similar to like this mom giving the, putting prices on the treats and snacks in the house and then them doing chores so they're probably more excited to do it and it becomes like a natural- Yeah, that's true. Habituating thing where like, oh, like- Walking the dog is so easy and fast and quick, and mm -hmm. I get to have a half a Gatorade afterwards, or like a Gatorade after whatever it is. But yeah, she, no, you're right. I, I yeah, I think there's probably a balance. Yeah, there's probably. I a wonder balance. if there's any parents listening that could chime in in the comments about this because I always wonder about that stuff. God, parenting. Because remember be when so we were at the hard. kicking crab on Friday? It yeah, was that kid that was just oh my gosh, his head off, and the parents were just sitting there like not doing anything about it. And it must have been going on for 25 minutes. I mean, 15 maybe? 15 minutes, sure. Yeah. But very loud, no control. <laughs> and it's like, I'm not a parent, so I can't understand that. Yeah. So I wonder if the parents are just so beaten down and so just accustomed and used to it at the point where they're like, I can't win every battle. This kid just kind of needs to get his energy out. Mm -hmm. Or is there a way to like stop this kid from doing that? Did your parents ever like pinch you as a kid? Yeah, my dad would definitely like kind of just like. I can't me, remember anything my parents bit. did to me. But I don't really remember. I remember more of my maybe when I was in junior high or a little before that. Like if I did something wrong, he would maybe get aggressive in a certain way. You were still doing bad things in junior high. Oh my god, I was doing the worst. Like being me. like annoying. I in snuck out every single oh, night okay. in junior high. I got a curfew <gasps> ticket every night. 
every night. And they never caught you once, no. except the one time I you got, got caught, caught by, by the, the cops. <laughs> there was this one girl I was like obsessed with, and I would sneak Did you guys out of the kiss? house. Kiss. Yeah, we did for sure. But she kept me in the friend zone. But you guys kissed. Yeah. We definitely did some stuff, but she still kept me in the friend zone. And it's kind of like... You're 12 doing stuff outside of kissing? And then my other girlfriend, after that, I was sneaking out in February. So this is the dead of winter in Chicago. Ice cold. And I'm like going to meet her at the park. And you're biking? I'm biking. With your stolen Target bike? No, no. (laughs) I was going into this... There was a park at this school that was in between our house. So I was going to meet her there and I was like kind of riding through this retention pond and all of a sudden I see a car off the main street just go on the grass and start heading towards me. I started freaking out because I thought that this person was coming to abduct me. I didn't think it was the (laughs) police. Like kidnapping was like a thing. (laughs) I thought literally I was getting abducted. It was terrifying. And then it was the police and I was like a little bit relieved, but then they put me in the car. They're like, what are you doing? You know, like, what are you doing? It's February. And, uh, yeah, they put the bike. What did they tell you? Or what did you tell them? I told them I was just meeting a friend. Mm. I don't know. I didn't know what to say. I was so, it was in seventh grade. They pretty much just dropped me off at home and they, they I got got like a misdemeanor. So actually, no, they brought me back to the station and my dad had to come pick me up and he were, and they dropped the bike off too. So they kind of like came with back to the house and stuff, but he was so pissed. I had to do community service. His best friend's wife was a judge. I saw her. So she kind of went a little like light on me, but also like try to like lay the hammer down about responsibilities and like gave me, uh, <laughs> gave me community service. That's so crazy. Yeah. I would. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's not that crazy. Is it right? It's just like sneaking sne- out at 12 in the dead of winter. Sounds dangerous. It was so easy. My parents, they slept with the soother on at the complete opposite end of the house. Yeah, so my sister, soother being white yeah. noise. And mm-hmm. so they were like isolated in their own thing. I, we could do whatever we wanted once they were in the room. Yeah. I've become a heavy sleeper because of Zoe. Because Zoe used to sleep in the same room as us in her little crate. And she would snore like crazy. And I became very like used to that noise level. So yeah. now I can sleep through a lot. Yeah. I used to be so light. Such a light I'm sleeper. such a light sleeper. You're still a light sleeper. I don't get it. Yeah. I could be being tiptoeing in the room as quiet as can be. You're like, you're so loud. I'm like, I was being so quiet. <laughs> or at least I thought I was being as quiet as I can. But either way, should we ha- should we talk a little bit about the Vanderpump stuff? Yeah. So by the time this goes out tomorrow. Yes. It's part the two. The next episode will be. Part two. This, uh, part two. Of the reunion so i thought the first episode of the reunion was like Eh. pretty annoying yeah they were talking So backing up a little bit about reality tv show i've definitely been hooked on vanderpump rules i blame tiffany 100 percent for doing this to me she knows that i despise reality tv show something about it irks me like crazy especially the bachelor matt turns into a monster i turn into such a shitty person because i can't stop myself i have to leave the room Mm -hmm. because i will hate watch it and make the experience terrible for everyone around and every once in a while i'll get caught on on a show or something if it's like too hot to handle that first season i was like walking out of the room and i saw i was like what the hell is going on and i was just like all right this is fascinating and then the same thing happened you came home maybe like a three months ago and you're like i got a show for us to watch yes vanderpump rules and i'm like come on you're like no this is good tv this is good drama so i was watching the first episode and you had walked in here and there you're looking at the tv i was like oh i i can get this guy hooked so then i watched the second episode and then you started sitting down watching this and i was like oh he's really hooked and then i remember asking you like do you want me to like restart it? Cause I'm on the second episode of the entire series. I didn't say series. restart it. We just kept running. No. It. Yeah. You didn't ask to restart it, yeah. but and I did offer cause, cause I it was knew you were crazy. getting crazy. So for those hooked. who don't know, Lisa or Vanderpump rules is a reality TV show. And it pretty much started because of Lisa Vanderpump, Lisa Vanderpump. She's, famous she's on desperate housewives real housewives okay let me yeah. just back up and yeah, you gotta give tell the, this the, yeah okay so for those of you guys who don't know vanderpump rules is a cast of reality tv stars that are all waiters and waitresses and bartenders at a restaurant called sir now sir is called sexy unique restaurant that's what it stands for and sir is owned by lisa vanderpump and lisa vanderpump is a household og of 
the real housewives of Beverly Hills. She was like the main character for the first few seasons. And um, she reached out to Andy Cohen, who is the producer of on Bravo and was like, yo, Andy, you got to film my kids at this restaurant. They are incestuous. They are crazy. They get physical. They get in fights. They they make up and they they fight all over again crazy yes and so they started filming them and it's insanely good at how crazy these kids lives are and i call them kids because when they started they were like in their early 20s and now i'm 30 so you wanted to back up and watch the whole show because of the current season that's out because there's a bunch of drama that's happening you wanted to catch up to it and then after like four seasons i'm like i can't because there's 10 seasons so i'm like i can't do this so i started reading all the summaries and just skipping ahead to all the reunions um and we've eventually got caught up in a sad and shameful short amount of time and here we are active and uh (laughs) it's all the gossip it's all the drama right now i can't believe i'm talking about it but even if you guys don't watch vanderpump rules you guys know who the key players are because it is mainstream news right now so tom sandoval who has been in a nine ten year relationship with ariana maddox cheated with her best friend raquel who was another uh like another character on the show who was dating a guy named james who was best friends with tom sandoval as well and tom sandoval paid for raquel and james's engagement like ten thousand dollars for their it's a pretty messy party. situation so they ended up wrapping season 10 mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden after they finished filming it news broke out and people found out that this there's been some really secretive affair going on for a long time so they rolled the cameras again and um they started documenting because it all came out and it's been such big news to the point where like this guy is taking it he's getting he's getting it right now people are coming at him he's on tour right now i guess he's a musician people are throwing stuff at him on stage booing i mean he can't can't catch a break it's pretty sad watching him on tour is low-key very cringe because he is in a cover band at 40 while all of this stuff in his life is going on and instead of paying attention to it he's like touring and just like yeah trying to like run away from his problems i mean i felt bad for how he's ganged up on no i don't feel bad that he's ganged up on in the reunions because this is what he he sat on those things for so many years, mm-hmm. laying down the moral high ground, being this voice of reason. You know what I mean? Like every time he would be like, no, that's not fair. I've been a good, just all these things. And then all of a sudden you find out he's the shittiest of all of them. Yes. He's the biggest snake in the world. He was lying like insane. He's the best liar that Kristen Doty has ever witnessed yes so anyways i thought the reunion was like it was i de- i think he deserves to be like shunned mm-hmm. in he needs to feel what he did but it was to a point where like they weren't even letting him speak they were booing when he was talking it's like come on just let like, like i want to hear him speak i yeah. want to hear how he feels is he sorry is he in love with raquel but apparently they're broken up now which i think was the dumbest move they could have done yeah you know how jeff bezos had an affair with Lauren Sanchez. Mm -hmm. They just got engaged. And now no one thinks about Jeff Bezos' ex-wife. They think about Jeff Bezos with Lauren Sanchez and they're happy for him being like, looks like he found the love of his life because they're engaged now. So the moral of the story is if you're going to cheat, cheat with someone that you end up being with. Cheat with the love of your life. Yep. And that's why people were rooting for Ariana because he made it seem like that was the love of his life, yeah, right? Yeah. Now Raquel just seems like, oh, went through a midlife crisis at forty because I was a loser, and now he's like, he lost the girl he cheated on with, and I don't know whose decision it was, but I think it was a bad PR look. They should have stuck it out at least past the reunion. I mean, she probably realized what she did was terrible. Raquel? Well, maybe she didn't realize, but I mean, you got to, how old is she? She's what, 30, 28? 28, yeah. Yeah, so she's a young girl. She's getting all this flack. People are like going at her, her family. I just read an article. The family had to hire like private security for her. Mm -hmm. It's not that worth it to be with a guy if that's the repercussion of it. She has enough time in her life to like rewrite her story and make a comeback like I don't think she loved him that much. I don't think they would have gotten married, Raquel and Tom. No but way. They should have stayed together longer than two months after the news broke out. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, 
Reality TV gossip. Didn't think I would be here talking I know. about it. Well, <laughs> apparently there's also more stuff coming out. So, um, and again, this is all theoretical, but there is a reason why none of the cast has signed on for season 11, even though this is like the biggest rating season they've ever had. Apparently the producers say that a huge secret is going to get dun, revealed dun, dun. during the reunion and they have not told every single cast member and they want the entire cast to know about it before they sign on. So there's like a lot of theories happening right now about what the hell is going on. Mm -hmm. One of them was like Rachel, AKA Raquel is pregnant. I don't think that's true because they broke up. Mm -hmm. They would have stayed together. Another is that their affair happened for way, 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 way longer than August, 2022. And then the third one was that, um, there's going to be a spinoff because no one wants to film with Tom or Raquel anymore. I think it's the middle one because I don't think that's that big of like news that they had a super long affair. Yeah. I think it would be crazy news if the affair was before James and her broke up. And that was the reason they broke up because remember in the reunion, James said they actually hadn't had sex in like three or four years. Remember he, he sent her those That's text insane. messages. Remember she fell asleep and had her phone off and he called and called and called and then texted her those like crazy messages. Like you're crazy cheating bitch, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then she was like, you need to be sober. And so ever since he became sober, they stopped having sex. I think they said they only had sex once. That's very weird. But I'm like, was she getting her needs met by someone else? AKA Probably. Tom Sandoval? Probably. Probably, right? I really hope it hasn't been happening since 2019. That would be insane. But I've seen some footage that's just like leaking around where it looks like things are a little weird. Where, remember Tom told James, um, I would never betray you <laughs> out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, why it's did like you say that? Slip. Yeah. Like, why did you say that? Yeah. I'm excited to watch it Wednesday. <laughs> Finally, let the gossip commence and be over. I'm ready for this to be done. I know. It's like Succession. We watched the last episode last night. That was crazy. The last episode. Yeah. It, it went on for so long. It felt I feel weird. like a hot take. I just didn't like the show the way the show ended. I was really happy. I was never a fan of the show. I really was happy that Tom was the one to come out. Yeah, you really want. You were really He was like, the only likable character. He was the only likable character in that show. I found no one likable in Tom that show. Tom was so funny. I guess out of everyone, yeah. He was such a complex character. Yes. Like he was so funny you could feel this like lack and needing to be accepted and he was just so i, I guess know. when you compare it to suits because we're also watching that right now the characters in suits are so yeah. likable even yeah. lit i think i started liking succession less once we really started watching suits because of oh, i'm sorry the characters are so much more likable in suits and that's what makes a really great show is when you have a very likable cast people mm -hmm. that you get invested in but the thing with succession was logan roy was interesting because every time he spoke it was like this profound thing and it was captivating and you wanted to see what would happen you wanted to see what his moves were mm -hmm. but then his whiny little kids once he died they just became even more whiny more mopey and there was nothing likable about any of them and so it was just very boring to watch for me i was like yeah. it had a good curve like a good trajectory and then it feel like they just kind of like they needed to end it or something but i know that's a hot take i know people love the show it's got crazy high I remember ratings there was like a uh, an episode that had a hundred score on rotten tomatoes and i was like some of the first like the beginning of this season was really good i mean when all that stuff was going on with kendall and he like killed that kid and it was like they were going back and forth they like that was insane that was such good tv oh, everything I do leading remember up that. yeah but like so many like it was a i good show. just i hated every single character on that show yeah no i get it tom though tom's wom tom wom scams i don't know how to say is that his, is that his last see I, I didn't i never yeah. got invested enough in any well, remember when we were at the emmys and we saw him win an emmy and we got to hear him speak. Yeah. I was like, hell yeah. Go I Tom. didn't know any of the characters' names. It's so crazy to and me. And I watched when, every episode. When you hear their interviews and how they really talk and they have like British accents, but in the show they have an American English accent. I don't know why I'm like hating on that show just like you hate on Bachelor. Like I just could not get into that show. Bachelor though. You know what? Speaking of reality TV though. I, I did meet Raquel. Oh, yeah. I did. met Raquel. Um, I, Reality TV's biggest villain right now. I Maybe met one of the biggest, the of all biggest time. villain of reality TV, Rachel Levis, a.k.a. Raquel. And I met her at a White Fox event. Um, 
that happened July 2022. So literally two weeks prior to her first time having sex with Tom Sandoval. And I remember meeting her so distinctively because she's beautiful in person. She was super tall, looked like an inf- like looked like a model. I couldn't tell what it was because a lot of these events you go to, it's like a mix, a hodgepodge of influencers, celebrities, and reality tv stars so i saw her and i was like oh my god she looks like a model like she looks so familiar so i went up to her because we were waiting in the same area to get our ears pierced i was like hey like you look so familiar have we met before she's like oh no i've never met you but i'm in vanderpump rules and i was like oh my gosh like i love that show like no wonder you look so familiar like I just said hi to her really briefly. She was super nice, a little awkward, I will say. And the entire rest of the day, I saw her just by herself in a corner, like not really hanging out with people. And these are like the types of events you go to, you go to with friends or, I mean, sometimes you go by yourself, but at least you're like mingling. She was just like really by herself the entire yeah. time. And I felt really bad for her. I remember feeling this way when I first met her and then full circle all this news com- comes out and i yeah. feel like she has been trying to find a place in la like making friends with her lover's girlfriend and like doing random stuff like that because she hasn't been able to find her- find herself i don't feel bad for her but i remember feeling bad for her when i first yeah. met her i don't feel bad after watching what she did yeah yeah she doesn't even seem sorry about it she just she's laughs. definitely a sociopath and I will say when I'm in an awkward position, I do smile. Like sometimes it's a defense mechanism to smile smile, or it's just like a natural like thing to do. But she takes it to like a whole other level because then she like laughs and like doesn't say sorry. Like I'll sometimes say sorry when I'm smiling just because like I feel bad, but I also feel like really uncomfortable. And the only thing mm-hmm. I can do is smile. Excited for the next episode. Yeah. Do we have a, any Am I Rottens? Yeah, we can totally do one. Okay. All righty. So are we doing a let's get back on the Am I Rottens? I know I we've been these. falling on the rotten game. Um, Let us know your guys' rotten, rotten stories or confessions down below. Okay, so this one is, am I rotten for not telling my friend about her boyfriend's red flags? Our original friend group had four girls and only one of us was single. Since all three of us are in a relationship, we tend to always talk about boys with our single friend. There happened to be a single guy in the group that we go out with a lot, and one of us had suggested our single friend to just go out to dinner with him. However, this guy tends to be a creep whenever he's intoxicated and has touched one of my girlfriends inappropriately in areas you shouldn't be touching people. Jeez. Our single friend ended up falling for him even though he had major red flags. We kept telling her to not go through with it, but I think she already developed feelings. She probably got stressed out and started to ignore us and started drifting apart. Long story short, we had a falling out with a single friend, but are we rotten for even encouraging her to go on a date with him in the first place? I think that if they were encouraging her to go on a date with him, knowing that he abused a woman, because let's call that sexual assault right there, right? That is Mm -hmm. sexual assault. He inappropriately touched a woman in a place he shouldn't be touching. And is creepy when he's drinking. Why would you want to set your friend up with someone like that? That's bad behavior. That's bad friendship. That is rotten. I mean, it sounds like afterwards they've encouraged her to stop, I think, seeing him. Well, how convenient. (laughs) Hey, go catch feelings with dude. And then, by the way. We warned her not to move forward as there are so many red flags. Did they tell him the red flag? Tell her the red flags, though? I I, I don't know. That's all the information that I have. But it started off saying, are... Am I rotten for not telling my friend the red flags? So that's the question. The answer is yes, you are rotten. Okay, well, I changed the words a little bit. Are we rotten for encouraging encouraging her to go on a date with him in the first place, knowing the red flags? Knowing that he sexually assaulted a woman? Well, sexually assaulted, like touched, slapped a girl's ass. Like, I don't think it was like, sometimes it could be ill intent, ill intention or sometimes it could be like, I'm drunk, like you got big boobies. So is that okay? I mean, I'm just trying to find the balance because like I could see how that could happen, but I'm also trying to be sensitive to that side of things where it's like women consider that sexual assault. You can't really blur the line there. If you're inappropriately grabbing a woman, that is sexual assault. Yeah. Right. I mean, I guess, I don't know. I, I, there are gray areas where it's like, if you're like good friends with a girl and like you guys just like play like that. I don't know. Yeah. I'm saying from a guy's perspective, like you got to be careful. And I, like that can easily be turned around as sexual assault. I think 
I think it's a little rotten to encourage it in the beginning, knowing that like this has happened in the past. Like maybe they didn't know the extent of his red flags, but it seems like since they've dated more red Mm -hmm. flags are like popping up and they're telling her not to keep continuing it. But now it's too late for her. I would say they're rotten if they didn't have her best intentions in mind and weren't looking out for her. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if you're looking out for your friend, you wouldn't want to set them up with someone that isn't good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I feel like this is like a... Give me your take on it because I feel like you're a little back and forth a little bit about this. I could see where they would innocently... In black and white, yes, they are rotten. But I'm wondering if like the red flag of like inappropriately touching a girl wasn't that big of a deal until like other red flags started popping up being like, oh shit, like like he's really a creep. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. it could happen once being like, "Mm, that's a little weird. But then if like other red flags are happening because now they're dating, they see, they hear, they see everything then it's like different it's like oh like wow i kind of feel shitty that i even told her yeah, about I this guy that. so it's definitely a spectrum it's i like, think she feels guilty. like a guy that maybe like does something a little inappropriate is a terrible person right yeah it's it's like if he does it more multiple times yeah yeah once could be an accident twice is a pattern yes absolutely um but i don't think she's wrong because she seems like she is feeling guilty about it so but she's guilty because she knows that she did something rotten that doesn't make her not rotten that might make her more rotten because she knows what she did was rotten in the first place maybe she didn't think it was rotten to begin with until (laughs) more signs came out because it sounds like she's saying that more more red flags started popping up yeah and well then maybe i think the conclusion is like it wasn't a good look definitely a little rotten to encourage her to go out with someone knowing that there are some red flags and Mm -hmm. it sounds like she was trying to make up for it and look out for her friend by telling her all these things as they continue to come up so it sounds like she ended up being a good friend it was had her friend's best interest in mind i mean it sounds like they're not even friends anymore because she said friendship breakups suck damn yeah either way um friendship breakup friendship breakups do suck yeah we've all had them real i mean relationship breakups suck too (laughs) breakups suck in general any type of breakup very true all right guys so if you guys want to be in our next am i rotten or rotten roundup leave us all your responses down below and we'll see you next tuesday yes see you next tuesday bye guys bye guys